Good morning. I'm going to give folks a chance to sign on before I begin. This is Brian Lockmiller. How are you doing this morning? My name is, I am the evangelist for the Park Hill Church of Christ. I appreciate everybody that will be signing on here and, and, and viewing what we're doing here in just a moment. Hello, Pam. Good morning. Hope you and Mick are doing well today. Randy, hope you're doing well today as well. Others will be signing on here and, and viewing this video here in just a little while. I want to go ahead and make uh, an announcement or two and, and understand that the video that is being presented right now live will actually be saved to my uh, Facebook page and will be available for public viewing following this. So if you do not get signed on right away, that's all right. We understand. But we are grateful that you are going to be here and, and able to join us this mor join me this morning on Facebook Live. Things are a little bit harried right now uh, with the way things are going in our world. We are being forced to do things that we are uncomfortable with, that we may not personally enjoy right now, but we are going to use the opportunities that we have and the, the technology that is available to us to be able to do the things that we're doing today. And so I'm grateful that you've joined me and, and the members of the Park Hill Church of Christ that are also logging in right now and viewing this with us. And I pray that everything is well with you all today. I want to make a couple of announcements here real quick before I get into the lesson itself. One of which is, again, I want to be mindful and thankful to the elders here at Park Hill Church of Christ for their thoughtfulness, for their wisdom. I know that the decision that they made to suspend services here for a few weeks was a very difficult one. It was one that they, they wrestled with very deeply and, and, and it was very heartfelt. It was one that was not easy for them to, to necessarily agree on it at first, but they did come to an agreement. And I know that they love the brethren here and are concerned for you physically and spiritually. And so we need to thank them and let them know how much we appreciate their leadership. The other thing too is that we are going to be doing this over the next few weeks and doing Facebook Live. We have a Facebook page which we will be making announcements on and bringing you up to date on, on when we'll be able to worship again here at the building at Park, Park Hill Church of Christ. But we'll also be announcing things like on my Facebook page and the Park Hill Facebook page of live feeds like we're doing right now. So we're looking forward to being able to, to do that. Uh, hopefully over the next few weeks too, I'm gonna to be getting some new equipment and possibly being able to do a little bit better technically uh, uh, these live feeds and, and we'll try to uh, enhance what we're doing here a little bit. Maybe in here in the near future, you'll be able to see a PowerPoint slide on the screen as well. But these times that we are experiencing right now are, are unique to us. And they are actually going to provide us with opportunities that we may not have thought about in the past. It's also a time because we now are practicing this social distancing with, with everybody that we might and very well could be come slack in our service to God. And I, I want to encourage you today to, to be thinking about that. Some individuals might look at this and say, well, Brian, what you're doing is you're forsaking the assembly. And I, I disagree with that right now. I know that they, they generally quote Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, but in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, that was an ongoing problem. That was a condition of the heart. That was a practice that some of them had, had done, and they were purposely foregoing worshiping and assembling together, and they were not even attempting to. Now, there are different ways like we're doing right now in which we can assemble together. And in this particular instance, we're doing it over over the Internet. And I believe that we are trying to do what we can under the circumstances to be the best Christians we can be. And I want you to 
to consider that this morning because that's what I want to talk to you about. And that's being the best Christian that you can be, not only just during these difficult times, but every day for that matter. But especially now, we are now basically shut off from most of the world. You might get out to go to the grocery store, things like that. But what are we doing while we are in our homes? What are we doing that that allows us to to continue to serve and worship God the way that we should on a daily basis? I want you to consider for just a moment something that the psalmist says in Psalm 139 and verse 14. Because he says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. I have a tendency to to look around at, at God's creation. But one of the things that stands out about God's creation is, is man. I know I talk about the Rocky Mountains and the oceans and things like that from time to time and, and talk about the beauty of that part of God's creation. But how marvelous is it that God created us in His image? How marvelous is it that if you look at the intricacies of, of the human body, how marvelous it actually is. But what am I doing with God's creation? You know, I may know very well that what he's done, and we, I may expound the fact that, that it is marvelous in that standpoint, but what am I doing with it? Am I trying to recreate it? Am I trying to do something different? Am I trying to do something outside of the scope of God's will? I found it interesting that I, I ran across a quote from Robert Browning, one of our poets. He said, my business is not to remake myself, but to make the absolute best of what God has made. Are we going to be able to do that even during these times? Now, consider this. Yes, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But what are we doing with what God has made? What are we going to do with our time? How is it possible for us to be able to, to influence one another? Well, Obviously, I believe this is one of those ways that we can do this. I mentioned that there will be another one of these at 6.30 on Wednesday evening, but there may be more of these throughout the week, or maybe if I get home in time and rework another lesson like I'd planned, I might come back this evening and have another live feed. But what am I doing with what God has created? What are you doing with what God has created? Our personal conduct is, is something that often is seen and something that is often that is not seen. We're not able to be together right now physically, but I'm looking at my screen right now and I'm seeing faces of individuals who are joining this, this live chat and I'm seeing you virtually. Now that may not be exactly the same. I can't see the expressions on your faces, but that's all right for right now. And I know for a fact that what we're going through is only temporary. We will be meeting together again, and we will be seeing one another on a regular basis once again. But we must continue to do things that are in accordance with God's will. So how am I going to conduct myself when you can't see me or I can't see you publicly? And I want you to take those things into consideration this morning as we, as we look at, at this together and, and Think about some of the things that we can possibly do that will improve our lives as children of God, improve our service to God along the way. The Apostle Paul said something to the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27. That, that, and I know the circumstances that have his writing that are different, but consider this. We're not able to see one another. And as Paul's talking to them in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, he's talking about being absent from them and them being absent from him and their conduct. When he says, only let your conduct be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now, there's a lot going on in that one verse, and I understand that too. But the main point that I'm wanting to gra grasp this morning is in our absence from one another. Is our conduct going to continue to be worthy of the gospel of Christ? Is it going to grow 
and our worthiness to the gospel of Christ. And so that when we think of this, because we're absent from one another, we still want to hear how we are doing. Are we able to continue to together to strive for the faith of the gospel? And I believe we can. Now we're just using technology in a manner which we've not necessarily used it before. And so consider all of that and your walk with God. Our personal conduct, you know, we may not be able to assemble together like we're accustomed to. But how are we going to act? Remember this, and remember this well. Just because we do not see each other, because we're not able to shake hands and hug and, and encourage one another face to face, you're still not alone. And there is someone watching you. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 13, this should bring this home very quickly and very powerfully because the writer there in the book of Hebrews had talked to them about the power of the gospel in verse 12, 11 and 12. And now in verse 13, it says, and there is no creature hidden from his sight. Who is that his in that verse? That's talking about God. We are still visible to God in, all, in this crisis. He is still seeing us. Whether we're sitting in our homes with our families, God is still seeing us. Because we're not together, God still sees us. And I want you to think about that. All things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. And so in the privacy of our homes, while we are practicing this social distancing as, as we're being encouraged to do by the CDC and, and, and other government entities, practicing the, the, the safe distancing so that we do not spread this, this common virus that's going around. But I asked you Wednesday evening when I did this, or last week, actually it was in the bulletin, Will your faith be as contagious as this virus is? And by your continued faithfulness in the absence of one another, you will be able to be pleasing to the sight of God. And that's what we want, isn't it? Our desire through, all this, through this situation is to continue to serve God to the best of our abilities, to be the very best child of God that I can possibly be. And what I want to suggest to us through all this is this may be an opportunity for us to become better children of God, better students of His Word. And so consider a few suggestions this morning as we, as we are together here on Facebook. And one of those is, can I do more than I've normally been asked to do? Well, as a child of God, one of the things that, that happens is, You've heard in the past that 99% of the work of the church is done by 1% of the people. I don't necessarily believe that's true, but I do believe that there are things that you can do now that you maybe you haven't done in the past. Can you do more as a child of God? Well, because we're having to stay home, and one of the things that I really dislike more than anything else in the world are these things. I don't like phones. I really don't. But because we have that technology, we can text our friends, we can text our brethren, we can call them on the phone, we can still hear their voices, we can check on them to see how they're doing. One of the things that we are supposed to do is prefer one another as children of God, and are we doing that? This is an opportunity to do that very thing, to be able to express our love and concern for one another in ways that we've never done it before. Our lives as children of God go beyond the walls of a church, of a, of a building. This is just an edifice, a place that we gather together. And, and I'm in my office right now at the church building, and it's kind of odd on a Sunday morning at this particular time not to have people out in the auditorium. But I'm trying to reach out to you this in this manner to encourage you to keep on keeping on as a child of God. And you can do that very thing. You, there is more that you can do. You can go that extra mile. Jesus talked about that in the Sermon on the Mount. Well, there is an extra mile that we can go with, not just because someone asks you to go, but because it's the right thing for us to do. We can continue to check on our brethren, to, to keep track of them, to make sure that they're doing well. And if there's anything that we can do for them, we can do that. We can also give a little more than what we normally do. 
Time is something that we have a lot of on our hands right now, isn't it? If you are not considered essential to your place of employment, very likely that you have you've been laid off uh, and, and, and you're spending more time at home right now secluded. However, there is more that you can do. You can give a little more of your time. Again, contact your brethren. Check on your neighbors. See if there's anything you can do for them. And see if you can be of more influence than you've ever been before in your life as a child of God. Careful what you post on Facebook, too. Make sure that the things that you're posting on Facebook or your, your social media accounts are those things that are wholesome, those things that, that reveal your faith, things that, that show that you're a child of God. Show those things that will help cause others to want to be a Christian just like you. Try a little more. That's the third thing. Just try a little more than you have to. And what do you mean by that? Well, I, I, I think in, in many ways that we post, we put in our bulletin, we put in our bulletin every week a, a weekly scripture reading. And we, we make it an a, a opportunity for you to be able to read through the scriptures once every year. Individuals quite often say, well, I don't have as much time to be able to devote to this as I normally do. Well, many of us have more time now on our hands than we've ever had before. And now is a greater opportunity to try to spend more time reading God's word, sitting there and simply meditating upon it. The Apostle Paul encouraged a young minister by the name of Timothy to devote him or to give attention to reading, reading the scriptures. The Apostle Paul had also told him that he had been made known those scriptures which were able to save his soul from his youth. And now we have an opportunity to spend more time devoted to God's word, to be able to, to glean the true treasures and the pearls of wisdom that are found in it. If there's one book in particular that you want to spend time in, do that. Dig and dig deep into the scriptures and, and meditate upon what God is saying. And I want you to consider this. Number four, aim a little higher than you think possible. Set goals. If you're going to spend more time reading scripture, set a goal for it. How, what, how much are you going to do today? How, how far are you wanting to go? But remember this, I'm not just challenging you to be reading the scriptures for the sake of reading them. I want you to read the scriptures for the, with the opportunity to absorb them, to be able to to consume them to a point that you remember them, that you truly write them on your heart. It's important for us that when we think about these things, not to become overly anxious with what's going on right now. And I know that during this time period of, of quarantine, I don't necessarily like that word, but that's what it actually is. But during this time of public quarantine, we can still aim higher. Our goals can be better. We have to try to achieve them and, and, and strive for them. But one thing that you must do when you consider the fact that you're talking about aiming higher, well, aiming higher means that you have to keep your focus on what you're doing. The Apostle Paul to the Church of Corinth said, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which were above. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Where is our focus? That is going to be the thing that, that really stands out during this time period. We consider, like I said, all the time that we have on our hands. You know, are we going to go stir crazy? Well, some of us might. Some of us might not. It depends on, on what we decide to do and where our focus is going to be. What a great opportunity we have to spend more time focusing on God and our reconciled relationship that we have with Him. Concentrating on the fellowship that we have with God, the Father, and one another is, is something that we have and can do at this particular time. The Apostle Paul 
also said, because you, you consider this for just a moment, that today will soon be tomorrow. And there won't be anything we can do with tomorrow. Saturday's in the past. Friday's in the past. We've got to, we only have what we can do today. And we cannot let the, the, the doldrums, the boredom, the, the whatever is, is crashing in on us yesterday to affect our day today. We must keep moving forward. The Apostle Paul says, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Well, how did he do that? By forgetting those things which were behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. We have to do that on a daily basis. We have to leave yesterday where it was. We can't worry about tomorrow. That's Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount telling us that very thing. We'll talk about, I think, well, in one of the lessons coming up, we'll talk about anxiety and what's going on today. But right now, remember this, aim a little higher. Keep your focus where God is, where Christ is sitting at his right hand, and keep moving toward him. And one other thing I want you to consider this morning, and that is to give more thanks to God for all his blessings. We are saying, well, Brian, well, I, I can't count this as a blessing. Well, we talked about counting it all joy when you fall into various trials on Wednesday evening. But I want you to consider this. There are going to be blessings that you may not have considered in the past or been as thankful for in the past as, as you do now. Consider this. Many of you are getting to, or have been able to spend more time with family now than you have been in the past because work consumes time. Everything that we do consumes our time. School consumes the time for children. We're not, families are not as together. This is an opportunity to be thankful for allowing us to be able to grow together as families. Be mindful of that. Appreciate it. You know, the Apostle Paul told the church at Thessalonica, pray without ceasing. Now is an opportunity to do that. Pray more than you've ever prayed before. Pray more than Daniel did three times a day. Pray more than what you have. But at the same time, when you let your supplications with thanksgiving, make those requests known to God. And understand that that peace of God that surpasses all understanding is going to guard your heart. It's going to protect you. Let us draw nearer to God in these coming days. Let us draw nearer to, to his word. Write it on his heart because it is powerful. It has the words of salvation within it. So please, take the time to be the best child of God that you can be. I found a meme on, on, on the internet the other day while I was researching for some things concerning this particular talk that I'm doing today. And it, 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 you can't see it, but it said, rise up and be the best you can be because your world is waiting for you. Well, in many ways, that's going to be true because when the coronavirus crisis is over, the world is going to be coming back together. But I want to alter that a little bit because the title of this lesson is Be the Best You Can Be and consider it this way. Rise up and be the best you can be because your Father in heaven is waiting for you. Remember this, if you miss heaven, you've missed it all. I want to thank you for being with me this morning on Facebook and and I hope that there have been some encouraging words that I could have given you to you this morning. I want you to keep on keeping on. Keep looking toward God every day. Grow stronger in your faith. Continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we come out of this, let's be stronger Christians. Let's have more zeal. Let's have more passion for God than we've ever had before. Let's reach out to those who have never heard the gospel and show them that through the gospel, they have hope, an eternal hope. And so let's be the best people we can be because our Heavenly Father is waiting for us. Thank you. I look forward to being with you again on Facebook Live. You all have a great day. May God bless you.